In this video, I create a new C-Sharp WPF desktop application using Visual Studio 2017. I add the source code to a Git repository and I host it on GitHub. If you want to watch how I do and explain this step by step, stay tuned. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years experience on the .NET platform. On this channel, you find videos about software development focused on the .NET platform. My goal is to help you succeed as a .NET developer. If you want to improve your skills, subscribe to the channel and watch my videos for free. This video is part of a series where I build a C Sharp application from start to finish on YouTube. If you want to find out more about this series, check out the video linked above. And now let's jump into it and create our new project. In Visual Studio 2017, click on the File New menu and select Project. We want to create a Windows desktop application using C Sharp. We have the options to create a WinForms or a WPF application. For this video, we want to create a WPF application. We need to name the project and for this video, we will create a desktop application for our project. I'll go with Hockey Fame for this project. We need to set the location of the new project on our local computer. Last but not least, we select the .NET Framework version. We choose the latest available .NET Framework version, which at this time is version 4.7.1. We click on the OK button and Visual Studio creates the project for us. It only takes a few seconds to create a project. The first thing we want to change is the window title. We set the title to Hockey Fame and run the application. Well, it starts, but it's an empty window so far. Let's change that by adding text to our window. We do that by using the WPF text blocks control and by setting its text property. Let's start the application again. And there it shows our text in the window. Great! Let's take a look at the files in our solution explorer. Visual Studio created for us not only the main Windows SAML file, which we already edited, but also the app config file, which contains basic configuration for the application. Currently, it only defines the supported runtime version we have selected in the project creation wizard. Next, there is an app SAML file, which will be used to launch the application. The important line in this file is the startup URI, which is set to main Windows SAML which indicates that the main Windows SAML file will be executed at application startup. Currently, there are no application-wide resources defined. And finally, there is the main Windows SAML file, which contains the SAML definition of our window. We already changed the window title and added a text block to its content. Visual Studio provides us with a preview of the window. It can be helpful when designing your SAML layouts and it works great as long as there is no dynamic content in it. That's it for now. We won't go into more detail about WPF in this video. In a future video, we will dive deep into WPF and how to lay out and design windows. Let's create a Git repository. We want to add our project to a local Git repository to prepare it for the future hosting on GitHub. I'll guide you through the process using Git bash for Windows, but the commands also work on Mac or Linux. First of all, we need to open our console in our project directory. Next, we type in git status to see if we already have a git repository in this directory. As we get the immediate response, it's not a git repository yet. Let's change that by using the git init command. We get instant feedback that we now have an empty git repository initialized in our project directory. Let's rerun git status. We get the response that there are no commits yet and that we have untracked files in our directory. Git also tells us that we can add files using the git add command. We will try to add our files using the git add all command. It turns out I have to close Visual Studio to complete the command. Running git status again shows us all the tracked files. Well, it's not quite what we expected. We do not want all the compiled artifacts in our source control. Let's reset the trackings by using git reset. We need to tell Git to ignore some of the files in our project directory. We only want to add specific source code files to our Git repository. Git has a feature that allows us to specify which files we want to be ignored. We can create a .gitignore file containing all the definitions. 
You can imagine that there are many different definitions required for our project and that it can be a lot of work to create the gitignore file from scratch. The good news is that there are many great gitignore files on GitHub and we can take a gitignore file created for the .NET projects instead of creating our own definition from scratch. I copy the content and paste it into my text editor and save it as a gitignore file in my project directory. Now that everything is set up, we can run git add all again. And as you can see, git now only tracks the files we want to be tracked. Great! Now let's create our first commit to our repository by using the git commit command and by providing a commit message. Next, we want to host our project on GitHub. First of all, we go to github.com and log into our account. I assume that you already have a GitHub account. If you don't have an account yet and want me to create a video about it, write it in the comments below. Next, we create a new repository. We need to define a repository name and optionally a description of our project. Once again, I use HockeyFame as the project name and provide a short description. I want this repository to be public so that you can take a look if you want. But you can also create a private repository that is only visible to you. Private repositories were previously only available in the paid plan, but got recently opened to all GitHub accounts. It's up to you. We don't want to create a readme file and we don't want to select the license for now. Instead, we click on the create repository button below. It only takes a few seconds to create our project. We will now see an empty GitHub repository. Next, we'll push our existing local Git repository to GitHub. We switch back to our bash console window and use the comments listed on the GitHub page to add our GitHub repository as a remote to our local Git repository and push our commits to GitHub. It takes a few seconds until the operation is complete. We run git status again and see that there is nothing to commit and that our branch is up to date with origin master. Let's head back to github.com and check if our source code appears in our project. And yes, we can see all the code we committed to our local repository appears in our GitHub repository as well. That's it for this video. We created a new C-Sharp WPF application using Visual Studio 2017. We added our source code to a local Git repository and configured its Git ignore file according to our project needs. Next, we created a repository on GitHub and pushed our local repository to our remote repository on GitHub. If you have any questions, write it in the comments below. I will be more than happy to help you out. If you have feedback on this video, I'd also love to hear from you. If you want to learn more about WPF or application development for the .NET platform, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications and don't miss a future video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next.